Hi everyone uh, and welcome to my latest interview. Today it's really, really interesting. Uh, first of all, we're on board a vessel, we're on board Scenic Eclipse, the world's first discovery yacht. And today I'm here with a very special person, Mr. Jason Flesher. Morning, Jason. Good morning. Thank you for having me join you today. That's, that's great. And uh, Jason is Scenic's expedition operations director so he oversees the whole of the operation for scenic and emerald ocean brands tell us a little bit more jason sure so my role what i oversee is the expedition side of the scenic product and so that includes all of our excursions that we do off the ship our, our helicopter program our submarine program our paddling kayak paddleboard programs, our zodiac tours, um, whether any region in the world as well. And then, of course, I manage and hire all of our expedition team, the discovery team. Fantastic. And they yeah. seem like a, a great team as well. But, uh, Amazing team. You know, the, the, the ship, I mean, I defy anyone to say it's, you know, it, the most attractive ship out there. It is such a lovely she is looking stunning. ship. She's but, stunning. Um, you know, the presentation you did yesterday, you know, was was hugely impressive, really informative. And there are some real specific advantages for people coming on Scenic Eclipse. And that, that's what I wanted to talk to you sure. about today. Uh -huh. So um, perhaps if you could just start by giving us a little bit of an overview about the technical side of things on Scenic Eclipse and then how that benefits a customer when they, they come on board. Right. So in regards to the discovery side of the ship and how the technical advantages of the ship that was built uh, specifically for expedition cruising. And a couple of things that really stand out. One is our stabilizer fins. Stabilizer fins are 50% larger than any other expedition ship out there. They're just slightly smaller than the world's largest cruise ships, stabilizers. And why does that benefit us? Well, take Antarctica, for example. Crossing the Drake Passage takes it normally your normal type of um, expedition ship heading from Argentina to Antarctica takes them a good solid two days um, to get there. Well, onboard scene Eclipse One, not only is she so stable, especially with the stabilizers and the way her hull was built, but she's also fast. She's a fast ship. And so we can actually cross the Drake Passage and be in the Shetland Islands in the uh, Antarctica area by late morning of the second day. So we can actually be doing uh, disembarkations, excursions that afternoon of the second day and not just two full sea days uh, that guests would experience on other ships. Yep. And also the hull itself, she was built, she's an, a, a class six ice rated hull which allows us to go deeper and further into the Weddell Sea or down well beyond the Antarctic Circle. Uh, super, super strong, which is actually one level right below an icebreaker. Right. So it allows us to go deeper and further uh, into reaches of Antarctica that most ships just can't go to. And with her speed, her stabilizers, allows us to reach these more remote areas. So it truly gives our guests that remote raw expedition feeling because you don't have other ships around um, you don't have you know that incursion and so it allows us to really have that full-on activation you know with all of our um, discovery operations that we'll i'm sure we'll discuss so and then the last thing which is a huge huge for us is the ship has what we call this dynamic positioning system or dps and what that allows us to do is we never have to drop our anchor. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically it's a GPS system, positioning system. So once the captain puts the ship in lee or in the right position, he just pushes a button and she'll never move from that position. She'll just hold that position the entire time. And why is that such a big benefit is a few things. One, we'll never damage the ocean floor. Uh, especially, for instance, when we're in warm tropical areas around coral reefs and we can go to very sensitive areas because we won't be dropping an anchor. Uh, we can use our DPS system. And also, 
if you've been on other expedition cruise ships where you drop an anchor and there's wind and currents, the ship will spin mm -hmm. around the anchor as the currents and winds change. And that's a huge disadvantage because when you, you lose Lee for doing off of Zodiacs on and off the ship, you need to have that clear water, not the heavy windy side. Yep. The ship's supposed to block the wind and, that, and that's the leeward side. And as the ship is rotating around the anchor, you lose Lee, which then we have to stop operations, raise the anchor, captain has to reposition the ship, drop anchor again, and, and now you're losing five, 10 minutes where on board scenic eclipse with our DPS system, she never moves. Mm -hmm. So we never have that delay. Yeah. Uh, and so those three features, the ice rated hull, the stabilization, speed, and most importantly, the DPS system for us um, is a huge game changer in the industry. Uh, not only for speed of expediting, uh, operation, but most importantly, it allows us to maximize our guest time mm -hmm. on the excursion on shore, yep. where other ships don't have that kind of time we have. Yeah, and didn't you mention, so the other thing on the anchor that I think I picked up was yeah. um, obviously yesterday, uh, sorry, the day before yesterday, we stayed at a lovely deserted island, Yes, but we had to be offshore clearly um and it was 300 meters, 300 meters. um so you i don't think right. many ships have a 300 meter um no chain on the anchor right um, and no ship could have stayed yeah. there because you have to do what we call a drift system yeah you know where you're just drifting and with the winds we had in the afternoon yeah yep. uh and the currents there's no no other ship could have done what we did because yep. of without the dps system and um because their operations just want to work yeah. if you have to either drift or whatever and because it was so deep of over 300 meters like you said there's no anchor that's yeah good. yeah and then why, why is the time so important because you yeah, didn't I pick up again in the uh, lecture yesterday jason that in antarctica you can only stay in a certain position for a certain length of time so right. time is is very very finite so it's really important that yes. ships make up five ten minutes here half an hour there you know so what, just tell me a little bit about that so for Antarctica and the Arctic also, right. many of the Arctic areas, when we book a site, um, it's time slots in those sites. Because remember, you're competing with many other ships and operators. So you want to two things. One, give others a chance. But two, you got to give the wildlife a break yep. as well, too. So you only have a roughly, it's about five and a half hours at one site. So you have a morning excursion, relocate, do an afternoon excursion. Five and a half hours may sound like a lot, but in a expedition mode, it's really not. And why is typical ships, and then I'll explain the difference with Eclipse, is you have your Zodiacs on a top deck normally, stacked and racked. And so you got this big craning operation to get your Zodiacs off into the water. Then once you get your Zodiacs, you get your drivers, you get your uh, expedition team ashore, you may have other activities such as kayak and paddle boarding. Um, takes before you're ready to even get guests ashore can take up to an hour to some ships that I've been on with other companies, an hour and 15 to an hour and a half before mm -hmm. guests are ready to go to shore. Yeah. The, the fastest I've ever seen was about 50 minutes. And so if you have that on both ends, that's two hours. Now you only got three and a half hours. Yeah. Plus in Antarctica, you're only limited to a hundred people at a time on shore. Mm -hmm. So you have a time restraint and limitation. So with your expedition vessels, you normally carry 200 people mm -hmm. because you're gonna do this two rotation. Yep. And in uh, your larger ships above 200, it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. you know, because of that rotation. So with that said, and then that operation, that three and a half hours now, you're really only talking roughly about two and a half to three hours total for guest experience, which leaves only an hour to an hour and a half per group to experience shore or Zodiac cruise, mm -hmm. okay? So you're really limited on the amount of time you actually have to engage in your location. So with Scenic Eclipse and the technology we have on board, 
is our Zodiacs are not on a top deck. They're actually in a climate controlled garage that's only a meter off the water. So we can get all our Zodiacs into the water. We can get our kayaks paddle boards. Plus we have our submarine, our scenic Neptune submarine. We have two helicopters. Um, and so we can get everything launched in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then we can get the shore set up get everything ready and we'll have guests actually disembarking the ship within 30 minutes, 30, 30 to 35 minutes um, is our window here. So just shaving that extra half hour, which is on both ends, is, is an extra hour to the equation, which actually allows us to give our guests a full two hour rotation in there um, on shore or on that Zodiac cruise. So because that five and a half hour block is ship arrival to ship must leave. Yep. And, um, and so it, it takes time in those operations. Yeah. So, so just to, to summarize that, yep. that conversation we've just had, you guys can get people to Antarctica quicker. Yep. Um, so they can see more things. And when they arrive there with this limited time frame, they can see more when they get ashore. And of course, we've not really spoken about the headline acts. Yes. We've got different <laughs> ways to see things. So let's yes. talk a little bit more sure. about uh, what you can actually do. We've got the helicopters, we've got the submarine, we've got kayaking, we've got paddle boarding, we've got zodiacs. There's a whole myriad of ways that you can see things when you yes. actually arrive there. You know, it's for one to see it in action because we pioneered this. You know, I know some you know super yachts will have a submarine or have a helicopter and so on private yachts but as a commercial uh discovery yachts uh, expedition ship that it truly was a pioneering experience to develop having all these options simultaneously and it's like literally watching a well choreographed ballet happening so our guests not only have the opportunity wherever we're in the world <laughs> but especially in Antarctica, to really see Antarctica from the air yeah. in our helicopter or under the water in scenic Neptune or on the water by Zodiac, kayak paddleboard or on land with you know our hikes and just experiencing the penguin colonies and so on. But it's all done with the expedition team, the discovery team that I have on board, which a full complement is 21 that's on there to serve and really engage our guests with the experience of what they're seeing. And the team itself is made up of PhDs and master degree holders. So they truly are experts in their field of knowledge. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds great. When we're, we're not in Antarctica today, but I really want to go and, yeah. and experience it. It does sound absolutely fantastic. So, you know, we've not really spoken much about the, the destinations, mm -hmm. Jason. So if we could just um, let, Antarctica, you yeah. know, just, just talk a little bit about, you know, when's the best time to go there and, you know, during the season, specifically, what can you see over those different months in Antarctica? Yeah, no, that's a wonderful question because Antarctica actually has about a four month season. Mm -hmm. And within that four months, it truly is, what do you want to see? What's more important to you? Is it, do you want to see um, baby penguin chicks? Uh, where the penguins are on the eggs and the ch chicks are hatching and so on, or is it whales that you really want to see? So the first half of the season, November, December, is absolutely the best time to see the penguin chicks. And if you want to see the emperor penguins, um, we do on board scene eclipse go to Snow Hill, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the Weddell Sea to see the emperors. And that season is actually November through first of December, truly first of okay. December, because by then the emperors are, have their waterproof feathers and they're ready to go to see the babies by that point. Um, but then from November timeframe to December, Christmas holiday time, when you have your gentoos, your delis, your chin straps, your king penguins, they're on their eggs at that point. So December holiday time is that sweet spot for seeing the chicks and everything. And they grow fast within yeah. three, four weeks, really? very yeah. quickly. And then they'll start molting and getting their waterproof feathers on. But if you want to see whales, if you want to see the uh, amazing plethora amount of whales that are down here, 
then January is that sweet spot. So pretty much from Christmas through end of January, beginning of February, that's when all the pods are down here. Now, of course, you'll see whales in November, December, as they're all migrating down here, or February, you know, time frame to early March when they're gathering to then go back north. But truly, Christmas through first of February for whales itself. You'll always see penguins, definitely from November through March, you'll see the penguins. But like I said, if you want to see the chicks yeah. and the hatching and so on, then that would be that November, December time. Brilliant, brilliant. And then let's move into summer months in the sure. summer months in the, for the UK, of course. Uh, the ship moves over further north to the Arctic. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about the Arctic. Sure. So um, think about, first of all, our bookends, okay, for eclipse. So Antarctica is one bookend and the Arctic is the other bookend. Yep. And then it's about where we go and what we do on the relocation between the two, which we can be very creative, yep. which we are. So as we sail up from Antarctica, we'll go to Brazil and then do a transatlantic to the Mediterranean. We'll spend a month and a half or so in the Med, and then we'll make our way um, to the Arctic, which usually will start that season in mid-June mm -hmm. at that point. So when we're up in the Arctic, we'll of course go well above the Arctic Circle. We'll go to Queenland, Iceland, Svalbard, uh, the Russian archipelagos, Franz Josef Land, and so on. And so we really go exploring, and of course the Canadian Arctic as well. So there, what's very interesting, obviously it's much different wildlife. And the highlight for many people is the polar bears and walruses, of course, and then you have more whales up there. Uh, but it's really the polar bears and walruses are the true highlights uh, for our guests up there, just like you know the penguins and whales as well. Of course, we'll see whales up there as well yeah. too. Um, but it's very different. You know, You have more vegetation. Uh, there, even though Antarctica is due to climate change and so on, is getting more vegetation down there, grasses, mosses, lichens. Uh, but you will see more in the Arctic, but also you have the Inuit communities mm -hmm. too. So the very unique thing about the Arctic is it's just not um, that kind of raw discovery. Mm -hmm. It allows us to have a combination of just not your expedition discovery type cruising but with the Inuit villages up yep. there it allows us to provide for our guests that engagement of, of the locals and so we create these unique what we call our scenic and rich uh, experiences where for the entire ship we set up a very unique uh, cultural type experience uh, with the local communities for our guests on board and then of course we have our tours uh, with the different communities and uh, those kind of cultural food uh, experiences to, so our guests can truly experience the local and also learn how to respect and understand the culture and way of life up there. So the Arctic provides us not just that raw type discovery yeah. experience that we do, but also the engagement with the local inhabitants as well up there. And, What's really amazing, like we talked about with the wildlife and so on, is one unique wildlife is that the Arctic Turn, and, and I always love sharing, especially with our guests who are in Antarctica, there's a wonderful place we take our guests to called Enterprise Island. And why we go there, besides there's a shipwreck that's half submerged, but also there's a nesting colony of Arctic Terns. And that colony is down there in the Antarctic summer but joining us for the Arctic, those terns have one of the largest migratory paths. They migrate between both polar regions. So we also visit the colonies up in the Arctic. Now, obviously we don't know, but it would be amazing to see the colony that was in Antarctica, you know, six months earlier up in the Arctic as well too. So there's those kind of unique experiences. Yeah. There. Jason. It's absolutely fantastic what you do. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you. Thank you oh, very thank much. Thank you, James. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you for thank letting you. me take the time. Cheers. Cheers.